Hello, everybody. It's Becky Belote here. I am a Creative Memories Advisor in Newport News, Virginia, and I am going to show you some tips today. So um, I have kind of a lettering idea that I've showed before, but um, I, it's been a while and um, we have a promotion right now. So if you're one of those that likes making cards, um, this might be for you. Um, we have some really cool card kits that are just super easy. So if you're not into making cards, but you want you want to make some um, and you don't want it to be hard and you want it to be really quick, we have cards, you know, for $22 a box. There's 12 cards. You can't beat it. They'll probably take you 20 minutes to put together in all kinds of different genres, like Tropic Time, super cool, very, very pretty. And they're like all occasion cards. Um, however, I know that some of you are like over the top crafty and that is not enough for you. So take a peek. Uh, if you spend $75, you get to pick one of three exclusive things that's for our card makers. Uh, if you spend 150, you get to pick two. If you spend 225, you get to pick three. And they all kind of go together. So if you, um, basically what I'm doing today is I'm going to show you some stuff that you might want to help you hit those thresholds to get those things if you're card makers. Um, the stickers you can use in your albums, the, uh, the template, I'm pretty confident you could probably use that in your albums too. But, uh, but in general, this is a super cool thing for our major crafters out there that love making cards and don't want it to be too hard um, because this is going to give you a platform to make them crazy beautiful without being hard. So anyways, let's take a look. I've, I'm going to be working a little bit with um, Painted Garden and on the farm. So let me go ahead and switch this over. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, I can't switch it over. Why? Because I'm not plugged in. So give me a second. There. That should work. Right. Should work. <laughs> you try. Okay, great. Oh, my goodness. I'm a mess today. Let's put that there and that there. Let's see if we can squeeze this in a little bit better. If I go like this, oh um, yeah, we're in there. All right. So the first thing I want to give a shout out about um, it's the on the farm layered borders. So I haven't been able to show these yet because I didn't have them in my hot hands, but I do now. And whenever we have laser borders, um, typically every single border is different. And I always say, don't get one, get two for double page spreads. And I'm still going to go by that on these layered borders. What a layered border is, is it is already got the foam pads. Like if you look at the back, you see how it's it's pieces that have been put together. They've been put together with little um, dots to give them a natural um, thickness, um, kind of 3D. Um, so you get one of these cornfield ones. You get two sunflowers, okay? So typically there's no matches, but you get two sunflowers. And I said to myself, you're only going to want to use those now. You're going to want to use those again in the fall. So I don't care that you already have enough for a double page spread. And you may want some at the top of your page and some on the bottom of your page. Do you only get one of those wheat fields, all right? You only get one of these uh, rolling hills that have these fun hay bales on them. You only get one of these corn stalks. And you only get one of this barn with the, the rising sun or setting sun, whichever way you want to see it. And then here we have two grass. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, you can use more than one grass. I know there's a lot of you out there that don't have the grass punch. Um, I know some of you do, but would rather have it all be done, especially when it's multi-layered. You know, multi-layered borders just are, you know, take longer. So anyways, I see this for spring, summer, winter, and fall, um, especially if you live in places that are green all year round, okay? 
So I um, wanted to, to, to show those to you. And now I somehow have to get these back in the package for another day, right? <laughs> All right. So I just wanted to give you the heads up so that you knew what was in there in case you want to just get one set. Um, but I still stand by my recommendations to get two of these if you like them. All right. So I wanted to show you, um, you know, when I make pages that are this easy, I don't need to tell you how to do it. Um, I'm just going to kind of plop them down and let you get a good look at it. Uh, this is the On the Farm collection. And do you see this border right here? This and this were, were borders in the border pack. All right. I did do a little bit of, um, I, well, let me point what else is on this page first. Okay. So I did have two packs in order to get two borders like this. Um, I, I had a piece of red paper that I cut in half. And here's part of the red paper. Here's the other part of the red paper on, on the farm. This is a mat from the mat pack. And what I did is I took one of my long strips of grass and I just snipped a little bit of it off to decorate this one up with some stickers here. All right. And so I did my little chickens down here. It says, welcome to our coop. Um, have a, a few little, uh, some uh, a mama rooster. I mean, a mama hen up here with some some little eggs and a little chickadee there. Uh, this is a mat from the mat pack. 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 All right. So I do. I'm going to stand by it. It's great to have those. So you don't have to hack up a bunch of your paper to get the mats that you want for your page. All right. Is that cool? All right. The only thing that I did on here that may not be intuitive is when you get two sets of borders, when they're off centered like this, you're going to get two matching ones. And I like for um, I like to have some symmetry. So I have a barn on the left and I want a barn on the right. So what I did with my second one is I snipped it and then just shifted them. So you can tell that I did that because I didn't snip it really in the right place. But only if you look carefully. OK, and I could clean that up, too, so that you probably couldn't tell. But I wanted you to know what I did. All right. I didn't want you to say, how did you do that? That's how I did that. All right. But but the whole point of this is. This looks like a lot more work than it is because of this border right here. I also wanted to remind you that borders don't have to go at the top or at the bottom on the sides. They can go right through the middle and get a really um, powerful effect. All right. The next one I want to show you um, has the corn at the bottom. All right. So it's got the corn on the bottom. Something else that's in this farm uh, set is a barn die cut. So this right here, I'm going to kind of pull it up. This right here came like this, all right? So you could put a photo in there. I thought it was a great place to put um, a mat. So this is a, a journal block from the mat pack. And I'm just going to put that underneath. Um, and that way, it's a great place to journal. And it also has added my decoration. All right, I on purpose now have put this embellishment so that it pops over this yellow mat and over this white mat. And I do that often. It gives dimension to your page. Another thing I want to point out is this corn, this is kind of a vegetable piece of paper. And what I did is I cut two inches off of my green and flipped it. So on the back of this vegetable is this green. All right. So that's a way to in, put some busy, cute papers on your paper without totally being extra distracting. Um, I also um, cut a, a white strip uh, with the, the scallop blade to give, I'm going to show it on this side because it's easier to see, um, to give that little look here, which I really dig. All right, I'm hoping it's going on focus. I can't halfway see. All right, is that cool? All right, so again, very easy. If you look at the detail here, it's not much. Cut, flip, put a strip here. The detail is in this border that was already done. It really looks like I went to in, in here. That was already done. So it looks like a lot of work when it's not. All right. One more. Um, this one. So uh, this I used, I built on Canary. By the way, I used an awful lot of Canary when I was working with On the Farm. So if you don't have that paper pack, you may want to invest in that if you have On the Farm. Um, a lot of our advisors have those in stock. So if you don't want a whole pack, why don't you reach out to your advisor, um, your local advisor? She probably can hook you up with just a few sheets. Um, I think you'll like the whole pack, especially with um, spring coming in. I think we'll use a lot of this color. 
Um, all right, so here's my sunflower that I put on both sides. And when I, uh, I paired that actually with the mandala burst border punch. I thought that was a really pretty combination, don't you? Yes, Becky, I do. And this is a um, a mat from the mat pack where I added a, a couple of sunflower stickers from that pack. And um, and all of these were cut with the deckle blade. All right, so um, like this last one, I said that I cut it with the scallop blade. I'm using our regular old straight trimmer. But if you don't have this guy, this is like $49. That's going to get you on your way to that $75 and some free stuff. And if you're a card maker or a crafter, there's nothing like this guy. It, it's truly amazing. And then we have these accessory blades that you can add to them as you like. So um, this one that I showed was with the scallop blade. It's one of my faves. And this is a deco blade. I love the deco. It looks kind of like torn paper. So it's great for your old photos. It's great for outdoorsy things. It gives that ragged look that I love. All right, so if you didn't get the hint how easy that was, I'm going to show one more look really fast. Um, so I'm going to grab these two pieces of paper here. This is from On the Farm. It's a really cute, it's got little, tiny little sunflowers on there. So they're not real obvious, really light, really fun, really pretty. Um, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like to add um, one of these pre-done borders to it. Okay, so already that looks really pretty. Now, what if I took my straight trimmer and cut these two pieces of paper at the same time, mind you, at like two inches and then flipped it? Let me show you what it would look like together. You see what I'm talking about? That's what I did on that other one. It's so, so simple um, and so, so fast. You could also just fold it over and put it down on a piece of, say, green card stuff. And then it would look like you went to even more trouble, right? OK, but it's not hard at all. So I just wanted you to get the idea of how absolutely super cool um, these laser borders are. They really are going to save you time on your projects. All right. So now I want to move over. Um, by the way, on the farm does have those borders that I talked about as part of um, the collection. It has stickers. It has one pack of paper. And it has mats. So kind of keep that in mind. And that extra large, um, that extra large barn laser die cut. Um, that's like five dollars for that guy, which is super, super worth it. All right. So, anyways, I am storing these in case you've never seen these before in our power project folders. So they store all of our different elements in different spots so that you can come across them anytime you want. All right, so I am trying to get you up to that 75 so that you can get your freebies by pointing out some of my favorites. You've, you've heard me say them before because they are my favorites. No lie, man. All right, um, I use them, I love them, and I want you to use them too. But um, today, what I really want to focus on is this page. Now, this page was made with painted garden. Painted garden. It's such a beautiful, beautiful line. And what I have used on this you should recognize this grass down at the bottom. So that grass came from on the farm. So again, don't pigeonhole those borders. They're going to go with a lot of our stuff. All right. Um, I used, um, this is called grid sans. So these are ABC letters. Gosh, I think they may have came out with um, the back to school line, maybe. Um, but they have, I'm not really sure, actually, I might be making that up, but they have little grids on them. Actually, it might have been National Scrapbook Day last year, um, but they have little grids on them or Croptoberfest, maybe. Let's let's go with Croptoberfest. Um, super look. And I thought that would go really good with my page here. Um, if you're liking how nice and straight those letters are, I'm going to show you a little hack for how I did that. I'm also going to try to remember to show you a hack if you run out of H's. All right, because I used a lot of H's in here, little H's. And um, when I ran out, I just made more. And I'm going to show you how easy that is. Um, I know how frustrating that can be. Um, and then um, I'm going to show you how I made these little Easter eggs. And I'm going to show you how you make, make a cute little mat like this. OK, so let's kind of jump into it. Let's start with the Easter eggs. Um, Easter eggs can made, be made very simply with our cutting and uh, our um, circle and oval cutting system. You do need a self-healing mat. 
Um, if you bought our lemon, if you don't have the system that has the, the ovals and stuff, um, again, you can get them. It's I recommend them. They're great for cutting photos and paper and stuff, all, all those things. Um, but you do need uh, the oval patterns for this. You do need the mat for this. And you do need a um, a blade, a blue, red. I recommend getting all, all three color blades for the cutting system if you like this. And then what I did on this particular one, in the painted garden, we have a lot of pieces of paper that are this kind of, they, they look almost like tie-dye. They're, they're, it's called ombre. And then on the back, there's also another pattern on this one that I really thought was going to be perfect for Easter eggs too. Um, what you can do, you actually can cut multiples at the same time. Um, so I'm going to go like this. I'm going to throw this. Um, this is not the smallest. Um, it is the second to the smallest. I'm pretty confident. And I'm going to cut on the inside, which I seldom do because they're so small on the inside. I like to cut on the outside for my photographs. But on the inside, you can get some super cute little um, eggs. We have another one that's even more Easter eggy um, in the, uh, I think it's the, what's that one called? Hmm, gemstones. Pretty sure it's in gemstones. All right, but um, you should be able to do uh, multiples at a time if you bear down on it. And so you can see how easy that was to make some Easter eggs. Okay. And then, you know, you can get different looks by flipping them over if you pick ones that have are really pretty on both sides. So that's all I did with that. And be, remember, this grass is already layered. So I was able to kind of squish those little eggs in between the layers to get that look there. All right, so I wanted to show you that. That's easy, right? Um, if you don't have this yet and you can't afford to get this yet, again, it's a must have. It's one of my favorite tools. Um, the lemon, if you bought the lemon for NSD, um, you can play around with the lemon. It'll be a bigger egg, but I think it'd still be super cute. Just cut off the little, um, the, uh, the leaves at the top and round off the little nub thing on the bottom. And that's gonna be perfect for that. All right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. Next thing I wanna show you is how to do this milk. Now I used, oops, it's got a foam pad thing. So I used Floral Peaks here. Floral Peaks is really nice. This is giving me a layer of flowers here, which I really like. Uh, I have, you could do a, a similar, a really pretty one with Damask, which I'll show that too. So I'm gonna start with Damask. So. In order to use these effectively on smaller than 12 inch strips, you need an even count, all right? So I typically make mats that are say four by six. So this piece of paper is four inches wide and I lined it up to the regular mark to do the two, two humps across the top. Now, if you want a little bit of variation, cut yourself enough four inch strip. Is this four? Yep and then do it again. But this time, because this is a frame punch, you can do it again where it is on this line instead. And hang hang with me so that you can see what's happening. All right, so I've gone all the way across. You can see that notch there, that's not right. So I'm gonna put it in this side now, line up my pattern so that this is inside here now, but I still have my pattern on the other side, the map there. So now what I've done is I, I have, have a, a really pretty look there, don't you agree? And I can trim that, actually this is probably the perfect size. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this down on top. You really, if you wanna save paper, you could just cut that part off if you want to, but I'm not because what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna cut it off at the bottom to give me a little bit of blue. Upside down, Let's cut a little bit, leave a little bit of the blue there. And then you got super, super pretty little mat there. Okay, you can put your photo right there or you could do a journal box as well. Isn't that nice? So just wanted to remind you about that little skill. Um, and we're gonna do something similar with um, 
with the floral peak. So, so remember I said an even number. I said I typically do four by six mats for my pictures. I went ahead and cut, uh, this is six inch wide, and I want it to be a little wider than that, okay? And the reason why is because I am going to line up my paper here to do my little punch across. And that's taking up some of my mat space, isn't it? All right, so it's beautiful. Actually, it's it's beautiful just the way it is. Um, if you don't want to do anything extra, you see that? And now you can see I've got plenty of room here to throw a photo. So so I'm letting I'm I'm going across here. So I went ahead and, and gave myself extra dimension this way. So if you want to put another layer on there, go ahead and cut another border. And I on purpose pick this one where I like both sides. And I'm just going to go ahead and do another border. Um, this one doesn't have the markings to offset. You certainly could offset it, but it really doesn't even have to be that hard. So let me, um, whoopsies, go ahead and do a border here. All right, and then let's cut it off. I cut these off at the one inch. So what do I keep putting this upside down? I'm gonna cut this at the one inch. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it down so that it is offset. Even though it's not filling the frame like that other one did, I'm going to do it so that it is offset. Let me grab my scissors that are in a mess over here. And just snip that off. All right, and then flip it over and do it again. Actually, flip it over and just place it down. We'll let this one go all the way across. All right, and there you have it. Isn't that pretty? Put your photo there. It's not really even, but we'll worry about that later, right? All right, so that takes care of that little technique. Last but not least, let me clean up my space just a little bit here. Got one more thing to show you. While I'm cleaning up, um, for those of you that want to do a beautiful Christian um Easter page. I highly recommend if you don't already have it, I know most of my clients already have it, the cross. There's a punch called the cross and it cuts, cuts out just across. It's 2450. It's on last chance. And if that is one that I think that you, you know, we should have in our repertoire for our Christian things that we do, it's a great little cross. Um, and another thing, it's been on last chance for a while, and I think it's one of our prettiest lines, and I don't promote it as much just because it doesn't have a lot of the other pieces that go with it, but it sure is pretty, and it's called Keep the Faith. Keep the Faith. The designer pack is definitely just very, well, well actually, they're both. There's a designer and a tone on tone, um, so that's something that you may want to grab. So I'm going to... Um, um, pull this over again um, to show you how pretty these letters were. And let's see, I used this H, I used this H. I had plenty of every letter that I needed except for H's. And you can see I had a lot of H's here. So when that happens, be on the lookout for something else that could work. And in this case, I can make H's from L's and M's. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we had a lot of L's and a lot of N's. And if I pull an L off, you see how it's exactly the same height as the stem on this H, exactly the same. And then when I looked at this part, I saw an N, all right? However, if I put those together, it's not quite right. But what will make it right is if you snip off 
a smidgen from the base of that end. And then put this on top of the L just at the bottom so that it's lined up. And then you have a beautiful H. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that you are on the lookout for that. A lot of our letters can be constructed from the letters that you have on there. If you if you've used up most of them, there's not a problem with getting another pack, right? But if it's brand new and you just happen to have a title that had a zillion letters in it, um, then this is a great time to use it. And if you haven't used our letters in a while, our letters now are really nice and thick. And what I like about that is in the old days, when you stuck one down, it's crazy hard to pull it back up if you made a mistake. Now, not so much. They, they, they are, are a lot different. And that's one of the reasons why I like using um, a tool that is kind of non-traditional for this. Um, and it's, it's, it's actually a stencil. Um, and to find this, where did I see it? I think it's with the pens. Like if you want to look for this today to get this and add this to your collection, you're going to look, I believe, in the pen section, okay, because it's a stencil. But what I use it for, <laughs> um, I, I sometimes use it for stencil, but I definitely use it to line up letters. All right. So let's say I wanted to put a title on this page here. All right. So what I'm going to do, um, I probably should use this H since I have it in my hand. Um, what do we want to spell? I should have thought of that. I can't stand just spelling for the fun of it. Um, let's say what else is coming up besides Easter? Ooh, we're going to a wedding this weekend. I don't know that I'll use this blue, but um, Aaron, if you're if you're listening, I really wish you the best. We are so excited. In fact, her wedding is going to be in a barn. Um, <laughs> so I might even be able to use this for for that. All right, but let's think of something. Let's let's write her name. We'll write Aaron and Dalton. All right. So here's an E. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your, your paper is lined up on the mat. Uh, you want to make sure your ruler is lined up where you want it to be. Um, I There's the one inch mark. And for this one, when I just did it, I went up one little hashtag guy. Oh, I didn't. I went up two. But I'm going to go down one. I don't want to give me some more space at the top. All right. Make sure it's level all the way across. So you, can, you can tell by your mat. And then there's the, all these little etchings for the, the little hash marks. I'm going to put this on um, the hash marks so that they're covered. Uh, there's one that runs deeper than the other, other and I'm not going to put it on that one. I'm going to put it on the ones that are a little bit shorter. Okay, so that's my E. All right, let me grab an R. Let's see here. All right, and I am going to space them. You can visually see the spacing, but what's really important is the faces so that they're right. Now, what's cool about this is our stickers are so dense. They're not trying to grab that paper. They're hovering above. So I don't need to build it on anything else. You can build it right here. Now I need an I. Mm -mm -mm. And um, I'll put the top on that I in a minute. And let's grab an N. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's do N. I really want an Amsterdam heart or something. That would be really cool. Actually, why don't we use this instead of a heart? Because we've got this right now. Okay. So we'll put that on there. And then Dalton is how he spells his name. Let's do Let's do an A. L. 
it was so cold when I started and I put my coat on and now I'm kind of hot. Don't turn on me. Husband has this habit of leaving the door wide open. And when it's, and you just saw it slip then. Oh man, have I been doing it with blurry the whole time? It's because my head has been in the screen. Let me um, see if I can get it to refocus for us. Ooh, that was a close one. I don't know how long it's been blurry for you. Anyways, um, uh, because it's not grabbing to the paper, it's okay that it slipped. Um, basically, what I'm lining it up to is this ruler part anyways. But when I get ready to stick it, it's going to be really important that I pay attention to where I'm putting it on my on my piece of paper. If I'm going to do multiple layers like I did on that Easter page. Um, see, they've got plenty of letters, but little H's, they just didn't have very many. You can see I, I cut up my little H's with my L's and N's and still had L's and N's left over. This Okay, so now you decide where you're going to put it on your piece of paper. And you can kind of, do you see how you can kind of see through? Like, what if I you know wanted it over here and wanted to kind of build around? You really could put it anywhere you want. Um, but it's important that you make sure that your strip, your blue strip, is um, nice and level before you stick it down. Let's say I'm going to put it over here. And you want to make sure, because of all the little measurements, you can make sure it's it's the same height. All right, now this is the fun part. You stick it down and press really hard because what happens is it actually is popping off this as I'm pushing. All right, because remember they're so dense, they are they are loosening from the strip. And we had another tool that you can't buy anymore that kind of did this. I think it's better. I really do because it doesn't hold on to this as, as hard. So it's much easier to, to make it pull apart. And then you just pull this away and you've got a beautiful title. And then I'm going to go back and get that dot for my eye and then put that down for Aaron. And then I could cut it off or I could leave it just like it is and then build around it. Is that beautiful? All right. So I'm going to save this H, I guess, because <laughs> I never use my H. Um, and that is all I've got. Um, if you happened to get the tractor, I know they sold out of tractors. I did see they were coming back, though. So if you didn't get one, don't freak out. But if you want some two-toned buyers, there's a border maker cartridge called Circle Chain. I don't think it's sold out yet, but if it hasn't, it will be soon. Um, for my clients, I do have a couple in stock in case it hasn't sold out. But if you cut with the border maker cartridge a strand of circles, you can cut off the big circle, one of the circles, mm -hmm. and put it down for the big tire to get make it a two-tone tractor. And then the trash that came out of that hole goes really nice for the for the tire on the front. So that's a great way to get some two toning there. Mm -hmm. um, I saw somebody doing this with the gear too. That's much older and harder to find. Um, but I thought this would be be great with the tractor. All right. So that is all I've got today, ladies. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check our last oh Flourish Vine. I made a note to tell you that Flourish Vine is another border maker cartridge if you don't have it's going to sell out soon. That was a really good one. And they finally pulled it. It's on last chance. I don't think they're gone at this time. All right. So thank you. Um, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And thank you for watching. Um, let's see. Let me change it back. There we go. Um, thank you for your support. Um, do know uh, it is $49 to join to be an advisor and you get more money for that. In other words, you get free stuff and you get a free credit uh, on your first order. So it is worth more. You get a free website to market this stuff. If you are interested in joining our sales force, um, please reach out to your advisor. And if you don't have one, I would love to tell you a little bit about our, our um, career opportunity. Um, again, thank you for watching. Becky Bloat, Newport News, Virginia. Bye. I can't see. Oh, I took my glasses off. I, I